Hey, how's it going, everybody? Welcome back to the channel and welcome to some really exciting news for Ultimate General American Revolution. The game has just received its largest update yet, adding in the full US campaign, a complete rework to the economy, a change to how production and offices work, a rework to how mining and you how you gather resources in the game, taxes, new European nations are now on the campaign map and visible, natives are also on the campaign map and visible as well as multi-national tactical battles meaning that the French can actually join you with their own forces inside of a battle and you can now get Native American tribe mercenaries who all come with their strengths and weaknesses so a nice way to kind of device diver, diversify the battles and then we even have a much larger campaign map battles which is again something that people have been demanding for so long the larger scale battles so when you are fighting Fighting these increased size like your major battle for Boston or something that's going to go ahead and you know obviously show itself with a much larger tactical battle map allowing you as the players to go ahead and build up your defenses and make your stand wherever you actually want so yeah um, um, absolutely massive update in today's video we're going to go ahead and take a look at all of these as well as a few updates from the previous patches which weren't obviously as large as this one but a little bit minor to give you guys a good idea about where the game currently is at and I thought I would do this because again the game is barreling to towards a Steam release. They've said they want to go ahead and release it in the summer. And, you know, I think we're definitely on track to go ahead and hit that because the full US campaign is out. I imagine we'll get like the beginning of the British campaign uh, when the game goes into early access on Steam. So it's actually in a really good spot. And now I haven't tested this out. But I know a lot of people have been asking if this game is worth buying yet. I still think definitely hold off unless you really, really want to play this game until the Steam release. But this is just, yeah, really promising. It looks great. And I I actually can't wait to dive in and try out this new update. So let's take a look at some of the new changes. In the previous patches, they actually went ahead and completely reworked tactical battles. I'll put up all of that on your screen right now so you guys can see. But basically, they've yeah made it so uh, that skirmishes take way less damage now to obviously represent their, their ability to form different formations. They've also made it so uh, that cannons, for British cannons, are more likely to make it to the front lines now as well. So completely re reworking how the AI was functioning with that made it so that muskets are way more deadly the closer you are so when incoming British charges are you know barreling towards you and you maybe get one or two volleys off that's going to devastate their numbers rather than it being the other way and also encouraging the American forces to actually close the distance on the British to go ahead and increase that damage they've reworked how morale works and they've also given you the ability to actually retreat from melee combat now instead of just uh, causing you to get stuck in there and obviously just die to the superior British soldiers on top of that they've also recently changed changed up the actual starting conditions for a bunch of the American campaigns. So and now, which is really nice, they've made it so that when you get extra muskets from the starting decision, when you're you know picking your being your beginning campaign, you actually do get brown besses, which is a really nice addition because that basically allows you to actually outfit your soldiers at the beginning of the game with actual good muskets and giving you a good little startup. However, you're not going to be able to replenish their muskets, but still nice nonetheless. As well as that, you also go ahead, if you choose the extra militia unit, it now gives you a fusilier unit. So a proper professional unit as well. So again, both of them changes really nice. Basically gives you a better kind of kick up, and it makes it makes it actually these are worth wild rather than investing in on that ship and trying to kind of conquer the British at sea. I'm actually not 100 percent sure. I mean, I think I probably still will go with the ship when I start my campaigns, just because playing the naval side of things is fun. But yeah, the extra muskets and the extra fusilier unit is also pretty tempting. But now let's move on to the meat of the campaign, and as you guys can see, there is a whole well a whole wealth of these changes lots of interesting stuff i'm gonna run through the highlights so you guys uh, can obviously read this for yourself if you want to pause it or just go over to their discord and read it read it by yourself but yeah i'm going to basically run through the more important things so we'll start off with the changes to sea invasions i know these are stuff that have really frustrated players because they're either really easy to defeat or they're just an absolute pain in the well you know what i'm gonna say so we're actually going ahead and made some additions to these so we we have the ability to go ahead and reduce the frequency of these depending on your difficulty so if you're playing on easy you're no longer be being harassed by the amount that you would say on hard or very hard they're going to be still very very kind of like interesting dangerous uh, positions and you're still going to be getting invaded on the easy because that's kind of how the British recruit soldiers whereas as the Americans you recruit them from towns but they're going to be less frequent and less dangerous on the easy difficulties giving you that easier experience that you're obviously choosing when you do pick easy 
On top of that, we also get the ability to have a 10-day notification saying that these invasions are arriving, they are coming, and basically giving them the option to go ahead and defend against them, which is something I really like. I like this approach to game design where it's not just like, oh, people are finding these really difficult, so we're just going to reduce them or make them basically not important whatsoever because, yeah, the British sending troops over is something that's going to happen quite a lot. But I like the way that they've gone ahead and designed it so that it's actually like, up to the player to go ahead and respond to this. You have this looming threat and you have 10 days to deal with it and it's basically up to you to go and actually deal with it in the first place. Next we have the full US campaign. So this is something that has obviously just been added in. So it hasn't really had much testing from players quite yet, obviously testing by their team, but this is something that I'm very much looking forward to fully dive into and experience because yeah, the full full US campaign, we have the entire campaign that came campaign map now, all of the East coast going down to i think the top of florida so there is a lot of new land to go and experiment with with the french on the campaign map now and also the native americans there's lots more stuff and i don't know if the spanish actually have territory because i'm not sure how like yeah i don't know whereabouts they would be but i think they will be on there as well so actually interacting with these nations and i guess we'll get onto that in a second is way more important and obviously the full u.s campaign map i imagine there is still a lot of uh testing now that the backers of the game have their hands on it they're gonna be messing around with it i'm sure there's a lot to mess around with and kind of just say like oh yeah this is broken the ai doesn't handle this well um so even though this is the full us campaign think of it kind of as the first iteration of the us campaign i'm sure there's plenty to change plenty to fill out and plenty to improve but still awesome nonetheless that we actually have the the campaign itself okay so the next one is actually pretty interesting we'll dive in game i'll go ahead and get rid of the footage i was showing and just dive in right here to take a look at it so yeah they've got ahead and improved the ui a lot so as you guys can see there's a lot more kind of more interesting uh like colors and the ui tool tips are all way better and a lot more polish you can see again a lot of these changes are happening you know as we get closer and closer to the launch or early access you know to kind of make it a bit more visible when people play the game but yeah the changes to the economy are pretty interesting but we also now have the uh, i guess the low ranking officers have now been improved and replaced with the specialist report so this is a complete change and not only do these guys still act as they did with the um you're replenishing your companies and replenishing your upper officers inside of your companies and your your naval ships and stuff like that but now they also go ahead and are required to go ahead and man proper buildings. So if we take a look at, say, we go to a building slot, let's go, I mean, it got built up everywhere. Yeah, if we go down here, you'll be able to see that now these settlements are actually required. So a schoolhouse requires five of these specialists, which is... Again, quite a lot, quite a big draw. Because a lot of the time, people were struggling just to simply refill their army. So I'm not sure if there's been some changes there to make the less officers required to replenish your forces. Because now if you're spending five to go ahead and grab into a schoolhouse, that's going to add up over time. The printing press is six. And having this extra requirement is actually going to be very, very interesting to see how that does balance out the campaign. But I like it. I like the fact that you actually have like an extra thing to think about. Personally, I would love them to take it a step further and actually make it so you actually have to like give additional resources like more wood and mining equipment and stuff to actually build these but i don't think the game is going to get that in depth even though it would be very cool speaking of which we now also have a whole wealth of different things so you can actually go ahead and ai command some territory if you want to or entire regions which is kind of nice because again as the map does open up like we are currently in the second stage of the campaign where we just have canada uh, and obviously the new hampshire area we then obviously have you know the lands down to the south which will expand out or even go west as well so yeah, there's a lot of the campaign map this is what like 10 15 percent of the overall campaign map uh, obviously that won't be as densely packed because this is quite an important part but still yeah you know i imagine most of it will kind of act as like the, the canadian border like what we're seeing right here yeah the ability to go ahead and adjust that is nice you also actually have with the rework to the economy have the ability to go ahead and adjust how much you're mining in a certain region because mining does create expenses but obviously you need these resources to go ahead and use your production so there's a real big like kind of change at back and forth so you can go ahead and adjust that and kind of maybe reduce your mining capabilities, which will reduce the amount of equipment you're getting. Uh, however, that will also reduce your costs. Like right here, 
I don't really need a lot of this salt, but I could obviously reduce it, but it's not really costing me a lot to mine it. So what does that really matter? And again, if you're trying to save money in a pinch when you're replenishing soldiers, that's something you can really do. Speaking of the economy as well, you'll be able to see right here with the financial report, a lot of more of it is a much more kind of in your face. Right now, I'm seeing everything that is actually costing me uh, on the market, which is nice. Having this more, uh, yeah, this better representation is great. I would still love, and I feel like this is something they need to add in, is like a um, expected income after after it, you know, after the day is ticked, after your expenses have gone out, and like an in and out kind of thing as well. Uh, whether it's like, yeah, you're 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 currently losing, like I think even up here, like you are currently losing 500 gold a day or something. Having that actual kind of visual representation, because right now I'm like, okay, so my army expenses is 6,000. I've got that, that's 7,000. Then plus the production, like right now I'm having to do it in my head, and it's just, it should just be something that tells me, you know, exactly how much I'm making uh, and how much I'm losing, like and basically an accumulation and then like a net profit or loss. Uh, I feel like that's something that should definitely be in this financial report. But now the new changes, the, the taxes and finances is really nice. And you also have plenty of new buildings as well. I don't think I have actually have access to any of them in these surrounding towns. But yeah, there's now like a tax office. There's like a marketplace. Again, all this stuff does just give you money. I think they actually have to be in like proper towns and stuff. You won't be able to just build them absolutely anywhere. Yeah. Yes, but I imagine probably in Boston and a few of the other important towns. Yeah, I can't seem to find any of the, the new buildings around here whatsoever, but still cool nonetheless that they've been implementing there and improving the building system. I imagine it's going to be very exciting with that. You'd also see as well, if you had Native Americans uh, as mercenaries, you would be able to then recruit them. And there's several different variants from the stuff that they've shown from uh, archers to Basically, the majority of them are using muskets at this point. Skirmisher cavalry is going to hopefully go ahead and give a whole different wealth of uh, way of playing. And I imagine a lot of the events will also change because of that. Because instead of just you know, when you give them resources to fight the British, I imagine that there's a good chance that you, you'll be able to actually make up some, uh, you know, some native tribe units and actually be able to start implementing them in your army much earlier than previously would you would think. Another massive change, and this is a really big one, and I think it's going to be a much better better way to do it and I hope uh, yeah, I hope this does also apply to the British in some ex to some extent. But look at this. So units home region is Hartford. Casualties will lead to losses of loyalty in that region. So when you fight a big battle and you end up losing some soldiers in that, that's going to actually affect the province loyalty of the system that they're from. So again, these, this kind of idea of soldiers being recruited from the surrounding areas and if a bunch of soldiers from that area do end up dying, that's going to affect the loyalty i would like to see some more i guess reasons to have higher loyalty there are some and a lot of the events spawn from having low loyalty etc but i'd like to see some really big bonuses for having high loyalty and a bit more of like a back and forth with the british when it does come to this because yeah it's in the game and you basically take a settlement and then you raise its loyalty that's really all i found on the face value and i would like a bit more of like ebb and flow of like Maybe even something like a supply system, you know, like propaganda and you're like trying to battle the British back and it'd be cool if you could like, you know, kind of do stuff to make maybe like a, a like Falma, for example, actually end up rising up against them because of your propaganda and you managed to like kind of convert them and throw the British garrison out and let's draw their forces north. Like something like that would be a really cool way of approaching the uh, kind of the, the battle for propaganda or maybe even if like you you kind of get really high propaganda in boston and then you can obviously send in your soldiers to fight them and because you have high loyalty there maybe you get a bunch of extra soldiers you know from the the town of boston i don't know stuff like that could be really cool and i'd like to see the loyalty system actually increased and improved upon because that was also obviously such a big part of the war continue on down the patch notes we also have the improvement to tactical battles so we mentioned this earlier but tactical maps on the large when you have a lot of soldiers have now been dramatically increased improving the ability and like your ability to kind of choose where you're fighting the battle the maneuverability being able to move soldiers around i think that's really cool and i think one of the big things that this does is if the enemy forces have reinforcements and it's a large scale battle it's going to take them longer to get there vice versa as well it's going to take your soldiers a bit longer to arrive on the battlefield i kind of like that idea encouraging soldiers to move over and kind of you know where you set up your soldiers that's going to be really cool especially when you're fighting these like massive like two three four five thousand man battles uh yeah it's going to be important to have that
then as we make our way down the list to the final couple options we have european nations so yeah stuff like the french i'm not sure if the spanish like again this is stuff that is all just recently released so i haven't had a chance to test it but i know that you can fight with them i'm not sure to what extent if they're going to have settlements on the map i just haven't discovered that yet but european nations are now in the game which is cool so that's going to be all the soldiers if we go back to the tactical map that's going to be all the people here it's so like the french the spanish um and obviously all the native american tribes are going to be here so actually going ahead and forming alliances with them is going to be important again i'd love to see more of this trade stuff like improved actually being able to set up trades would be cool and trade routes that'd be really nice but you actually see their colors now on the campaign map as well and they're yeah they're going to be busy fighting so i'm really excited to look forward to that and see exactly how they are i'm going to assume as we go further south they're going to have settlements they're going to have armies moving around and being able to coordinate attacks and stuff is going to be very exciting fighting like a 2v1 against the british is going to be really really cool and if you can get like the french and the spanish to join you yeah it's going to be joba because i mean yeah some of the biggest british defeats were with the french on the battlefield so being able to do that is going to be yeah great i mean yeah finally and uh, we've already looked at it but yeah we, we've already looked at it but you yeah, have a native tribe mercenaries that can be hired uh in the territory where they live so again if you take over land where there's uh there's tribes there you'll be able to recruit mercenaries to go ahead and fight you and i also imagine you'll be able to recruit some through tons of events because there's a lot of events that kind of make certain tribes in like uh, ally with you and join you so that's all going to be a thing but yeah that's going to do it for today's video uh hopefully you guys looked forward uh, to this update because yeah i'm very excited we're probably gonna have to dive in with it uh next week to mess around with the new update uh so definitely definitely tune into the channel subscribe if you're looking forward to this game as i mentioned the game i don't know i've i, I it's hard to say without fully diving into the full US campaign. I imagine if you're on the fence about this game, whether or not to pick it up, just wait till Steam Early Access because there's also no guarantee as well if you do back the game now to play it over on their website that you're going to get a key on Steam to also play it. I think definitely they should do that. They should give out a bunch of Steam keys to everybody who backed the game because they've already bought it. Um, and obviously everyone likes their games on Steam. But I would probably still recommend just simply waiting to early access. I don't think it's going to be that far away. Maybe like two, three, four months. You know, they said summer. I think summer is still very realistic. Kind of adding in the, the basis of the British campaign playing is like the first year. And then seeing that developed. And then also have lots of time to go ahead and improve the US campaign. And obviously as well, keep in mind that like... I imagine a lot of the development time going forward is just to go ahead and enhance and improve the current US campaign now that it's in. You know, this isn't kind of its final form yet. There's still going to be lots of changes, I'm sure, lots of improvements. And I'm just I'm just here for it because this game is so much fun. It really is. And the better and the more people who play it, the better it's going to be for sure. So yeah, if you guys enjoyed this, make sure to drop a like and a comment down below. I'll see you guys in the next one and fish out.